have a new battery charger and tester in for review. This is the Zamflare C4 and it was sent in via Zamflare. I thought it would be interesting for viewers to have a look at this because it has quite a lot of features and I've put most of them on the screen for you. So we have a choice of four charging currents. You have the capacity testing, you have two modes for that internal resistance and it can fast charge all four slots at an amp at a time so that's quite a good feature to have there's the car charger and this is the power adapter the length on that just under 1.2 meters and a quick look at the user manual this is actually quite a good user manual it's one of the better ones couple of typos but very easy to follow I find it quite an easy charger to use but they have laid the manual out very logically and it's uh, very easy to follow that so a quick look at the design of the charger we have six buttons the four buttons on the base to select the base and to go through the different displays two buttons at the front will allow you to change the modes and the charging current the cover isn't uh, completely solid uh, but it's strong enough probably to protect the display and this is a very strange design in some ways they've got the positive terminals facing down rather than up but you get used to it the spring pressure on this though it is a bit more than I'm used to on most of the chargers, so there's quite a bit of pressure on the springs compared to, say, something like a Nightcore D4. And a look on the underside, lots of ventilation slots with this charger, so hopefully that will keep batteries fairly cool. And it's just got a rundown on the spec there printed in the middle. Now on the back of the charger, there's your input for the adapter, and there's a USB power bank function output, so you can't use that with uh, when it's plugged in you'd have to use it when the batteries are in there as a power bank and compared to the D4 it's quite a bit bigger actually the slots are virtually the same length on the two of these but it's a good bit bigger than the D4 so when you power it up we'll see the display come on reasonably decent one uh, the viewing angles are quite good except from right behind the charger but at the front and to the side pretty decent so I'm quite happy with the display I wouldn't have minded it a bit bigger but uh, it's uh, not a bad display at all now after 30 seconds it does dim down but you can't actually turn the display off entirely but it shouldn't annoy um, if you've got it say such as on a bedside table or something and you have your reverse polarity protection so it just takes a while to get used to the fact that you have to put the positive terminal down. That kind of threw me off initially. Most chargers, it's the other way around. It's probably not the end of the world. And once you've put the cell in, you can see on the display, the default charging is half an amp. So if there's a power cut, or if you put a cell in, it will always charge at half an amp. Then you can go through pressing the left button to change the mode that you want. So you have the normal charging, test, there's a fast test as well as the longer test which we'll get into a bit later on and then on the right button you can control your four charging currents and it ranges from three goes to five then 700 and 1000 milliamps so that's a good range to have you don't have the two amp charging that you have on the opus you can charge two bays at two amps but one amp across four bays is still pretty good a lot of chargers would drop down you have about 10 seconds to change the settings on this charger if you go after that then you'll have to press the button again but a quick press on the button for each of the channels will take you through the voltage the time the internal resistance and it will also give you the information how much milliamps it's charged into the battery so that's probably as much information as you're likely to want so you just push and hold in for a longer period of time if you want to change the settings that could be changing the mode or if you want to go and change the charging current so you're not you don't have to take the battery out so just long press and then cycle through you have your three modes there and then you can go in to the right and change the charging current the only criticism I have of this is if you take a battery out, it doesn't stay in the last mode. It always goes back to the charging current. As far as battery sizes, you can fit two 26650s in this. And I've listed out all the other cells it take. Didn't have any problems with any protected 18650 cells. But I did try the 21700 that I got from Nightcore a few months ago. And that won't fit into the charger literally there's a couple of millimeters extra that you need and it's the same story with the nightcore d4 this cell won't fit in shame they couldn't have made it just a little bit longer because if these cells become popular it might be something you'd want to do here's a protected olight cell and that fit in without any issues at all so even the micro usb 18650s i found fitted okay so really no issues on that side of things 
can see now that I've put the four in there and once you start off with the charging you'll see that you can able to select all of the bays at the same time again so if you've got uh, two cells in there the same thing you can select two at the same time and then if you want to go through individually you can change the channels if you want so that could be handy if you have the power off and you load it up you can set them all to say one amp quickly rather than going through each individual one and changing it and then just click through on the display the display will stick on what you've left it at so if you've put one on the voltage you could put one on the time and one on the charging current it's not a real-time charging current it just tells you the speed that you set it to the opus charger that i looked at previously that would give you a real-time current but the voltage display is real-time so when you see a voltage slight voltage drop on the nickel metal hydride cells when they finish charging it doesn't freeze it like the d4 does now the only possible thing which you could get confused on is if you have multiple selected and you can see I'm going through and changing the current but they're all changing at different currents so if you change the mode back to charging that will reset them back to the default half an amp. The only th uh, other change that I might have made with this is if you had it set for the internal resistance again it just goes back to the charging and now we're just having a look at some of the information of the time and the internal resistance and the milliamps now it's charged into the cell i think this is quite useful information because you'll be able to see how long it's been charging how much current is put into the battery um, i would have liked to have had a real-time display but on the um, charge current but it's not really a huge issue um, it's not something which would bother me particularly. I did find the voltage display a bit high compared to some of the other chargers. So you see 4.2 and they're coming off. And I'll show you in a second. I tested the termination voltage and they come off a little bit lower. It's not unusual to have that, but it could be a bit more accurate. So you can see the Olight cell here, 4.17 over Samsung, uh, 4.18, 4.18 on the 26650. So they're coming off in a good range for uh, lithium ion charging charging the nickel metal hydride batteries at one amp heat isn't a problem it's delta v termination so they do heat slightly right at the end of charging so you get a temperature rise and then it will uh, drop the voltage slightly and then it's finished the termination and these are coming in in the expected range up to around about 1.5 volts the bottom of the charger does get quite hot so you do want to have it on a flat surface I wouldn't suggest putting it on a thick pile carpet or anything because that could block the vents. Now when you're using it as a USB power bank, remember you can just use this with the batteries in, lithium ion, uh, any size cell will do, but obviously there's no point using the smaller capacity ones. And I'm getting pretty good output off of this, up to about 2.2 amps. I'm charging two devices off of this one USB port. And if you insert additional lithium batteries into the charger, it doesn't actually make any difference in terms of the output. I didn't find any difference. It will just mean that you'll have more capacity to charge with. It's quite a useful feature. You can't, unfortunately, have it plugged in and use the USB port to charge, say, a phone whilst you're charging the cells. So I've taken one of the devices out now. I'm still getting a decent 1.5 amps almost. My next test, I'm going to do the fast and the normal test. The difference is the fast test discharges the battery, so useful if you have a low voltage cell, then it charges it up and counts the capacity that it's put into the battery. The uh, normal test will charge the battery up, fully discharge it and then charge it again. Obviously that's going to take longer, but it will be more accurate because it's telling you how much current it's drawn out of the cell rather than charged into it. But both are useful to have. There's no separate discharge mode on this, unfortunately. Now the results I'm getting off of the Zanflet are quite good. I would say that the Dragon is probably a bit more accurate, but this is close enough for my liking. It's only really the larger capacity cells. It tends to slightly overstate the capacity. So thoughts on the C4. Overall, it is quite a good charger. Would have changed the design a bit, made it a bit smaller. You can't fit C cells in this. I would have extended the width of the charger to fit those, but it does have quite a lot of good features. Good termination as far as the charge quality is concerned. No complaints there. And I like the fact that you do get those uh, features for the internal resistance test and the capacity checking as well. So definitely a couple of points to tweak on this. Shame you can't fit those larger 20 and 21 700 cells in there, the unprotected ones, but still probably worth looking at in this price range.